Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And joining me today is Kenyon McDuffie. Thank you for having me, Krillius. I appreciate being here. It is great having you here with us today. Thank you so much for being here. So I want to start this all off with just having you introduce yourself to our guests and giving us a little bit of background about you. Sure, my name is Kenya McDuffie, as you mentioned. Uh, I am the council member representing Ward 5 of the Council of the District of Columbia. And I've been in my current seat since May 30th, 2012, so nearly 10 years. Uh, I am a native Washingtonian, third generation, and I am uh, also the chair of the Council's Committee on Business and Economic Development. And since uh, 2013, I've been the chair pro tem of the Council of District of Columbia. I've spent my entire career in public service and uh, I'm also running to be the next Attorney General of the District of Columbia. Awesome. Well, so you have been, you know, in public office for quite a while now, and now you are looking to be the DC Attorney General. Tell me, what was it about this cycle that made you want to throw your head in the ring? Well, uh, as I mentioned, I, I've been on the council for nearly 10 years, uh, but I've been a District of Columbia resident my entire life. And so I've had the benefit of growing up and experiencing all that the city has to offer, which has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, but there's also uh, some component of challenges uh, uh, with that as well. So if you are, uh, if you've been in the District of Columbia for some time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the District of Columbia of 2022 isn't the same uh, DC that many people experienced in the 1980s and 1990s like I did mm -hmm. growing up uh, uh, in the city. And so I think we're in a similar moment. Uh, I think that uh, when you think about where we are as a nation, where we are as a city, uh, that we have uh, confronted, I think right now in this moment, a historic crossroads. And so uh, we continue to see prosperity. I just finished a, a hearing at the council uh, on the chief financial officer. And so I'm well aware that we've seen surplus after surplus. We have a AAA bond rating on Wall Street. We have had you know uh, more than 25 consecutive balanced budgets to the District of Columbia. And so the rosy picture that I think most people understand nationally doesn't really reflect the swaths of people all across our city with unmet needs. Yeah. Uh, and those people are counting on us, elected officials, to do something about it. And so I'm running to lift up their voices. I'm running so that uh, everybody's voice across District of Columbia is heard, regardless of where you live, regardless of where you come from or how much money you have. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. running to be the next attorney general because I believe deeply in public service. I believe it's my life's work. And I've got a record of building uh, the sorts of coalitions around really tough issues, but also delivering results. Uh, so I'm running because I love our city and, and, and no one in this race, I can assure you, is going to work harder to protect the public's interests and to ensure that fairness and justice exists for every resident uh, across our wonderful nation's capital. Certainly. Now, you mentioned some of those tough issues. I'd love if you'd get into some of those and talk to me about some of the issues you'd love to tackle if elected to this post. Sure, sure. So uh, as, I, as I alluded to a little earlier, for many people, our city has changed a lot over the last several years. Uh, by some accounts, uh, there have been uh, more than 20,000 Black D.C. residents displaced from the District of Columbia. And I've witnessed uh, the changes firsthand uh, across the city over those years. And I've witnessed them firsthand in my neighborhood. So, you know, for, for too many of our neighbors, uh, things like decent housing, neighborhoods that are safe, uh, mm -hmm. having economic opportunity and security in a city that is uh, rapidly changing. These are daily challenges that people are confronting. And, and the reality is that these challenges that uh, people are experiencing today are similar to the challenges that I saw growing up in the city uh, when I had you know, people in my own neighborhood struggling with crime, addiction, issues, poverty, homelessness, uh, and scores with people without jobs or hope. And so uh, these are the challenges, Aquarius, that we still must overcome today. And so uh, I'm the right person to really, I think, build on the tremendous work that we've seen 
uh, our current attorney general will do over the last uh, several years as the first uh, elected attorney general of the District of Columbia. But given the dynamic times that we are in, um, I am really well suited uh, to build and to tackle issues like environmental justice. Mm -hmm. right? Where you've got neighborhoods that are primarily uh, you know, made up of black and brown residents that continue to confront you know, uh, trash transfer stations that don't have buffers, that emanate smells, that really you know, make it offensive uh, mm -hmm. for these people in these communities. And there's a history uh, in cities across the country, including in the District of Columbia, of governments uh, locating uh, municipal services and industrial land uh, in communities where uh, black and brown people uh, have lived. And I wanna do more to address the impacts of environmental injustice in the District of Columbia. Uh, I wanna make sure that uh, the concerns around consumer protection uh, that exist today, and it existed for decades, but I think have been exacerbated during the pandemic when you have unscrupulous uh, business owners preying on District of Columbia residents, particularly our senior citizens and other vulnerable adults, uh, making sure that people who would do and engage in that type of conduct are held accountable uh, and that that accountability happens swiftly uh, is one of the roles of the attorney general. And I wanna be able to work on those consumer protections issues, just like those environmental justice issues, uh, working to continue to reform our juvenile justice system, making sure that mm -hmm. young folks uh, who commit crimes are held accountable, but, but that they're, they're held accountable with uh, consequences that are age appropriate, that consider the conditions uh, that these young people uh, have to live in and have grown up in, uh, making sure that their neighborhoods are safe, but uh, following the presence of all the police in these communities after violence occurs, advocating that those same communities that have largely extorted, uh, experienced violence uh, historically also are exposed to more opportunities. And so, I'm gonna be a, really a champion for justice and fairness in every part of the District of Columbia, uh, but I'm gonna be the only candidate who advocates for those things and also uh, has a unique experience of having grown up in the District of Columbia uh, during some of the worst times, but also being a former prosecutor. I know what justice looks like. Uh, having uh, you know, experienced early years in my life when I graduated high school without attending college, mm -hmm. uh, not having economic opportunities, not having a job, uh, and facing those decisions that, that one has to make uh, where you lose hope. Uh, I know what that feels like. I don't have to guess uh, what that feels like for some of the young folks who are in the District of Columbia today. And I also know what opportunity looks like. Uh, because when I was faced with a lack of hope, uh, where I didn't feel like there were people who were reaching out to help me, um, I was uh, blessed to get a job. Uh, carrying mail for the United States Postal Service. And that job changed everything for me. Uh, I saw my wow. own financial circumstances change, um, but I also saw how people viewed the opportunity that I got to work in that federal government job with benefits and with a living wage. Uh, and I know what that opportunity did for me. And I think more people across the district should experience those types of opportunities. Certainly, certainly. Uh, so when does voting begin for uh, the attorney general position? Yeah, there's a primary that is uh, not too far away on June 21st uh, mm -hmm. of this year. And so uh, I'm really excited about uh, that primary date and our campaign, uh, which I announced on October 21st of last year, has been hard at work, uh, you know, really building out our base of support. I've had the privilege of representing Ward 5 for nearly 10 years, which means mm -hmm. I've got uh, a base of voters who are used to voting for Kenya McDuffie. And so uh, my task has been to build on that and really assemble a campaign team to help me do that. And uh, you know, thus far, we have been successful in generating a broad base of support, a coalition that stretches across all eight wards of the District of Columbia. Uh, it's been reflected in uh, our ability to raise money. Uh, to support our campaign, and we're engaging in the fair elections program as well. And so uh, I think what people will uh, see that distinguishes me is both the uh, professional experience that I bring, the lived experience that I bring, and the broad coalition of supporters that I've developed uh, in the early days of this campaign. 
Awesome. Awesome. I want to say to our viewers that if you want to make sure that you're both ready for the elections this year, you can go to headcount.org to check your status or register to vote. Once again, that is headcount.org. Now, Council Member Matt Duffy, how can people keep up with you, support your campaign, you know, get any updates if they need, or just to find out more about anything? How can they go about and do that? Well, they should uh, definitely uh, visit our website. Uh, which is mcduffy2022.com. Uh, and you'll find some information uh, about me uh, at the website. Uh, reach out to us on social media. So we're on all the social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we want to engage voters. Uh, this is a conversation that we're having about the future of the Office of the Attorney General. Uh, I am uh, going to be the people's lawyer. Uh, as the next attorney general. And, and that means I'm gonna represent the public's interest. And in order to be able to do that, I've got to hear from our residents. Uh, we have uh, nearly 700,000 residents in the District of Columbia and every single person's voice is important. Uh, and so communities that have felt long neglected should know that they're gonna have a champion uh, in the next attorney general uh, in me. Uh, they should also know that as a part of this campaign, uh, that we're engaging with people, a cross section of people across the district of Columbia. And we wanna hear from uh, residents. Certainly, certainly. Well, you can reach out and make sure that you are heard. The link to uh, the link will be in the description below, so you can access it from there and reach out if needs be. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Matt Duffy, for being here with me today. It is always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to do this again soon. Take care. Certainly. Thank you so much. To everyone watching, please follow Team Racing Productions on all forms of social media. And most of all, thank you for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.